Come have a seat in the Skull Circle and hear the tale of the Singing Sword as told by Casimir. Before we begin our tale, did you know that we release new stories for free every week on Wednesdays? Be certain to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Spotify, Podbean, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. That way, you'll never miss out when we release free bonus stories other days of the week. Never forget, visit thescaldcircle.com to stay up to date with all of our current happenings. And to also visit our story archive, sorted by origin and region. Now then, this begins the tale of the singing sword. Weird, 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 ever weird. Listen to Sarvik of the woolly white hair and lolling red tongue. In the ancient days of wizards and witches, there lived in Estonia a giant hero named Kalavipog. His back was like an oak, his shoulders were gnarled and knotted, his arms like thick trees, his fingers spreading like branches, and his fingers as tough as boxwood. As for his huge sword, he could whirl it around like a fiery wheel. It whistled through the air like a tempest. When he struck downward, its keen edge was as lightning, a splendid sword worthy of a great hero. He was wrought with the aid of powerful charms and tempered in seven different waters. And for the sword, he paid a hero's price. Four pairs of good pack horses, twenty milch kine, ten pairs of yoke oxen, and wheat, barley, rye, bracelets, gold coins, silver brooches, the third of a kingdom, and the dowry of three maidens. Now, it one chance that Kalavipog, with a load of heavy planks in his back, was traveling over the land. He reached the margin of the Lake Papis. Without waiting for a boat, he plunged into the water to his middle and strode across to the other shore. On the other shore, an evil wizard was hiding in the bushes. He saw the giant Kalavipog drawing nearer, looking huger and huger at each stride. The wizard swelled his bristly body, bristly as a wild boar, stretched his wide mouth and blinked his small, upturned eyes and muttered a spell. Instantly, a storm wind swept over Lake Papis. But Kalavipog laughed a loud laugh at the wind and said to the lake, You miserable little puddle, you are wetting my belt. Then he stepped on land and laid down his bird in planks and trimmed off their edges with his sword, after which he stretched himself out to rest. The evil wizard saw the gleam of the sharp sword and determined to steal it, so he slunk deeper into the forest to wait. Kalavipog refreshed himself with bread and milk from his wallet, loosened his belt, laid his sword by his side, and soon fell asleep. Presently, the ground shook with his snoring. The billows of the lake arose and the forest echoed his snores. Then the wizard stole softly from the forest and like a cat crept up to the sleeping giant. He began to mutter magic spells and call the sword to leave its master's side, but it would not move. Then he uttered stronger and stronger spells. He scattered rowan leaves, thyme, fern, and other magic herbs over the sword. At last it moved and turns itself toward the wizard. He grasped it in his arms, but its great weight almost bore him to the ground. He struggled painfully along, step by step, dragging the sword. By and by he reached a stream and jumped over it. Splash! The sword slipped from his arms and sank deep into the stream in its deepest place. The sword slipped from his arms and sank into the stream in its deepest place. Then the wizard began his magic spells again and sang and muttered and sang again but the sword would not return. Day dawned and the wizard fled into the forest. When Kalavipog awoke, he rubbed the sleep out of his eyes with his huge fists. He felt for his sword, but it was not there. He saw the marks where the wizard had dragged the sword along. So Kalavipog rose up and followed them. And as he went along, he called on his sword to come back to its brother. He begged it to return, but there was no answer. Then he sang magic spells but there was no reply. When he reached the stream, he saw the sword gleaming at the bottom of the water. Then Kalavipog cried out to the sword, asking who had stolen it. 
and sunk it to the stream. The sword sang in reply that the wizard had taken it, and that it had slipped from his grasp and fallen into the water. And now, sang the sword, I lie in the arms of the most beautiful of all water nymphs. And does my sword, sang Kalavipog, prefer the arms of a beautiful water nymph to the grasp of a hero in battle? But the sword refused to return, and Kalavipog began his incantations. He sang and sang, and he laid it on the sword, that if any heroes came to the stream, it must answer them. And if a singer came, it must sing. And if a giant hero came as great as Kalavipog, it must rise up and be his sword. But if the evil wizard came, it must cut off both his legs. Then Kalavipo took up his load of planks and went on his way, and where a waterfall came foaming over high rocks, the three sons of the wizard met him. Two of them carried long whips with a big millstone fashioned to each lash. There in deadly combat, Kalavipo overcame the three sons of the wizard. Then he passed on. Coming to a swamp, he felt tired, laid down his planks, and stretched himself out to sleep. And while he slept, the evil wizard crept to his side, and with spells and incantations, threw him into a magical slumber. And Kalafibog dreamed of a better sword than the first one, a sword forged in the workshop of Ilmarinen, Finland's wizard. Forged in that wondrous workshop in the interior of a great mountain at the middle point of the earth, seven strong smiths wrought it with seven copper hammers, and Ilmarinen, Finland's wizard watched every stroke of every hammer. And so Kalavipog dreamed on before he set out on other greater adventures. Many were his adventures, many witches he outwitted, many wizards he fought and conquered. Kalavipog, fair Estland's hero. And that is the tale of the singing sword. Thank you for listening to our story. If you enjoyed it, please take a look at our Patreon page to learn how you can earn great rewards while also supporting us. We appreciate even the smallest of contributions, as they allow us to continue to release new stories every week for free on Wednesdays, and to provide bonus stories for your listening pleasure. A special thank you to Cat for their support this month. It means the world to us. Visit us at thescaldcircle.com to view our story archive, sorted by origin and region, and to stay up to date with all of our current developments. Once again... Thank you for listening to our story.